Yes. Okay. Today I will discuss the uh, the concept of eight zero eight five architecture. Actually, before we starting this topic eight zero eight five microprocessor architecture, first of all, it should be very clear that what is the meaning of microprocessor. Uh, क्योंकि बचपन से ही हम लोग सुनते चले आ रहे हैं वट इज सी पी यू सी पी यू बट वी डोंट नो एक्चुअली वट इज माइक्रो प्रोसेसर सो इफ यू आर टकिंग अबाउट सी पी यू सो सी पी यू इज बेसिकली अ पार्ट ऑफ कंप्यूटर बट इफ यू आर टकिंग अबाउट माइक्रो प्रोसेसर सो माइक्रो प्रोसेसर इज बेसिकली एन इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ सी पी यू इन सिंगल चिप तो दैट्स वाई इट इज नोन एज माइक्रो प्रोसेसर माइक्रो मीन्स स्मॉल तो अगर हम सी पी यू के ही इम्प्लीमेंटेशन को स्मॉल फॉर्म में रिप्रेजेंट करके अगर हम उसे इनबिल्ड करते हैं दैट इज जनरली नोन एज माइक्रो प्रोसेसर ओके Uh, so now we will start the uh, the internal architecture of 8085 uh, architecture so before starting this again uh, some uh, important characteristics of 8085 must be very clear uh, the very first microprocessor that is developed in uh, th that is developed by intel after 4 or 5 years this uh, 8085 microprocessor is developed uh, which is basically of 8 bit microprocessor and uh, the address line that we use to access this microprocessor is of 16 bits okay so uh, now we have uh, the the internal architecture of 8085 actually if we are talking about internal architecture so what what do we mean by internal architecture internal architecture means that is not visible by visible by a human eyes if you are talking about outer architecture so outer architecture is visible to all but if you are talking about internal architecture so internal architecture is not visible it is basically the process through which we can perform the operation of 8085 microprocessor okay so what is the internal architecture means how the data will be processed from one location to another location that is only the mean, the basic meaning of internal 8085 microprocessor okay so now we will start 8085 microprocessor here we have uh, 8085 micro processor so in this 8085 microprocessor actually total 14 registers are used out of which 12 registers is of 8 bits and two registers of is of 16 bits so now the next question is that why these registers having size of 8 bits actually i just told you earlier that 8085 is your 8 bit microprocessor that means the data that we required to store the information is of 8 bits so that's why the registers that we use is of 8 bit registers Uh, out of which here we have to, uh, total eight registers, which is named as W, Z, B, C, uh, D, E, and H, L. Uh, in these registers set W and L, the W and Z, these two registers are basically used to perform internal operations by microprocessor. Okay, so let's suppose if microprocessor perform addition operations, and during addition operation it required to store the result, uh, store the intermediate result. So these intermediate results is basically stored in a temporary registers that is represented by W and Z. Now the remaining are that is B, C, D, E, and H, L. These registers are basically used by the programmer. If the programmer want to perform some operations and uh, he want to store he or she want to store uh, some particular intermediate data towards the register, so for that these registers are basically used. Actually, these registers are used in pairs. That means eight and eight uh, bit registers are combined combinedly basically used. What is the meaning of combinedly used? Because sometimes there is a requirement to store the address also. Okay, so I earlier told you that eight zero eight five is your If 8085 basically uses 16 bit address so if we want to store 16 bit information so it cannot be stored in 8 bit registers so that's why these registers pairs are basically used in combined way okay after that we have an accumulator registers accumulator registers is basically a, a very basic registers that is used by 8085 microprocessor again if we want to perform addition operation and we want to store the result in particular registers so for that we generally use accumulator registers we have arithmetic and logic circuit also the meaning of arithmetic and logic circuit is to perform arithmetic and logic operation arithmetic means addition subtraction multiplication division and logical means and or and uh, these types of operation basically implemented by arithmetic and logic unit here one more registers is basically used that is known as flag registers the size of flag register is of 8 bits and it basically contain total 5 flags so before starting this flag register first of all uh, the meaning of flag must be very clear that means what is the meaning of flag flag is basically a status bit register a status bit means if uh, the value of that particular bit is zero that means that is off if the value of that particular flag is one that means that is on so that's why we generally use flag registers so total five flags are basically used in 8085 microprocessor the first one is sign flag 
which represents the signs of the information that means the number is positive or negative the next one is zero flag let's suppose if we are performing subtraction operation and a and b we want to perform subtraction between a and b and a and b are equal so when we perform subtraction a minus b then the result will be zero so it must be highlighted by a flag and that flag is only known as z flag that is represented as zero flag after that we have an auxiliary carry flag that means when we add two 8-bit numbers then after four bit numbers if there is any carry then it is represented by auxiliary carry flag then we have parity flag what is the meaning of parity flag actually let's suppose if we have 8-bit information so in 8-bit information we have actually 8-bit binary information so it must contain 0 or 1 so we just count the number of ones if the number of ones is even then this flag value is 1. If the number of ones is odd, then this flag value is 0. That is your parity flag. And after that, we have carry flag also. Carry flag means, let's suppose if we, if, we, if we perform addition between A and B, and after addition, there is a carry. So if there is a carry, then that carry is basically represented by this carry flag. So if there is carry, then the, the, then the carry flag value is 1. If there is no carry, then the carry flag value is 0. So this is basically the meaning of flag registers. Okay, uh, instead of these 8-bit registers, I just told you earlier that there are total 14 registers. Out of these 14 registers, 12 registers is of 8 bits and uh, the 2 registers is of 16 bits. So the 2 registers that they are having size of 16 bits are generally known as a stack pointer register and program counter register. Program, what is the meaning of program counter register? The meaning of program counter register is that it basically points the current instruction that is currently executing. Okay. So, and, uh, and after that, it, it is, it is automatically incremented and pointing to the next instruction also. So, let's suppose currently we are executing this instruction and now after execution of this instruction, we want to execute this instruction. So, next instruction address is basically stored in program counter. Actually, we just store the address. And we earlier told you that 8085 is basically your 16 bit address contained. So that's why the register size is of 16 bits because here it contains the memory address information. Now the next we have a stack point. Uh, next we have a stack pointer. Actually, uh, uh, let's suppose if you are using uh, main memory that is also known as RAM. So in RAM, some space is basically reserved for uh, for performing some internal operation by microprocessor let's suppose uh, if we are currently in this particular position and we want to jump in another position so if we want to jump another position and after that we want to come back towards this position so that address information is also stored in in somewhere in memory so for that purpose we generally use the concept of a stack pointer actually stack pointer is also pointing to the address that's why the size of this register is of 16 bits okay Next 8 bit registers are uh, instruction register. Instruction register basically store the current instruction. Let, let's suppose program counter is pointing to some instruction. That instruction is basically stored in this instruction registers. Actually the instruction that is written in 8085 is in assembly language. So uh, actually assembly language is basically used to, under, uh, to understand for human beings. But the, but the microprocessor cannot understand the meaning of assembly language. So for that we have to convert assembly language into machine language. So for this purpose, we generally use the concept of assembler. So when we write assembly code, just like move A to B, let's suppose we want to move the information from B to A. So that is, that is your assembly code. But when we write this particular code, then assembler convert this code into 8-bit information so that the microprocessor can understand it. So uh, the, the instruction is currently stored in this instruction registers. Okay. We have some temporary registers also. Temporary registers is basically used by the programmer to perform their internal operations and store some temporary values. Instead of this, we have uh, instruction decoder and machine cycle encoding. Instruction decoder, as I told you that when uh, I have written a machine, when I have written assembly code, and assembly code cannot be uh, understood by the uh, by the microprocessor. So that assembly code is converted into machine code. So uh, uh, this conversion is basically known as instruction decoder. That means we just decode the information. That means which operation we want to perform. Let's suppose if we have written move A comma B, that means we want to transfer the information from B register to A registers. But how the microprocessor can understand it? The microprocessor understand it with the help of instruction decoder. Decode it and after that it provides the synchronization. Matlab, all the devices that is attached to the microprocessor has been synchronized. Okay, that is the meaning of instruction decoder. 
Okay, below uh, program counter registers, we have incremental and decremental address ledge. What is the meaning of incremental and decremental address ledge? Actually, it is basically used to increment and decrement the address information. That's why we generally use incremental and decremental address ledge. It is also of 16 bits information. After that, we have address buffer and data address buffer. So uh, actually, when we provide the 16 bits address information, so these 16 bits address information is multiplex. That means out of these 16 address line, we have eight address line that basically store the data information as well as address information also. And the remaining eight bits uh, address line basically store the address information. So these 16 out of these 16 address lines, eight address lines information is multiplex that may contain data as well as address also. So that's why here we have an address buffer and data uh, address buffer also. Uh, data address buffer basically contains the data information and address buffer basically contains the address information. Okay, uh, towards the left hand side, we have timing and control unit. Actually, timing and control unit is basically a brain of microprocessor because whenever we want to perform the communication, let's suppose if I am a microprocessor and I want to communicate with peripheral devices. What do we mean by peripheral devices? That may be input devices, that may be output devices, that may be a memory. So whenever I want to communicate that information, then first of all, the microprocessor as well as the peripheral devices must be synchronized. So for that synchronization purpose, we generally use this timing and control unit. Here we have different signals just like clock in and clock out. Clock in actually whenever uh, uh, we use a particular microprocessor, so every microprocessor requires some clock frequencies. So this 8085 microprocessor required clock frequency of 3 megahertz. So clock in basically used to synchronize the internal uh, part of 8085 and clock out is basically used to synchronize the out, out, outside devices that means peripheral devices. Then we have ready signal also. What is the meaning of ready signal? Again, let's suppose if I am a microprocessor and I want to communicate with peripheral device. So uh, the speed of microprocessor is very fast while the speed of input output device is very slow. So if we want to uh, manage this speed mismatch, so for that we generally use this ready signal, okay? Then we have RD complement and WR complement signal. RD complement and WR complement means whenever we have complement signal, then that signal is known as active low signal. That means when the input is zero, then this is active. And when the input is one, then this is deactive. RD and W bar means, RD means the microprocessor performing read operation. Uh, WR means the microprocessor performing write operation. Read means to take the information from outside uh, um, outside the microprocessor and write means to store the information to the outside microprocessor. Then we have address latch enable ALE line. It is also basically uh, uh, used to demultiplex the address and data information. As I earlier told you that the address line is of 16 bits out of which 8 bit information contains data as well as address and next 8 bit information contain address information. So the first 8 bit information contain address or data. So it will be identified via ALE signal. If the ALE value is 1, that means the 8 bits contain address. If it is 0, that means it, uh, the 8 bit contains the data information. Then we have S0, S1, IO, oblique and complement. S0, S1, IO, oblique and complement is basically your status signal. S0, S1 uh, basically specified that uh, when we want to perform read operation, write operation, okay. RD oblique and complement means if uh, IO oblique and complement means if we are performing read and write, so from which device? From input output devices or from memory? So for that we generally use IO oblique and complement. Actually 8085 also supported DMA architecture. So for the DMA architecture we require two signals. The first one is hold and the next one is HLDA. Okay, reset in is basically used to reset the internal information of micro, uh, micro, uh, uh, microprocessor. Just like uh, the reset, uh, the content of program counter. Reset out means to reset uh, the outside uh, word information. Let, let's suppose if we, are, if we are connected with peripheral devices and memory, to reset that particular information, we generally use reset out signals. The very above, we have two unit also. The first one is known as interrupt control unit and the next one is known as serial input output control unit. Actually, interrupt control unit means uh, uh, if we are talking about 8085, so 8085 basically uses total five types of interrupt. What do we mean by interrupt? Interrupt means, let's suppose if I am a microprocessor and I am busy uh, to perform some operations. 
suddenly the outside world provides uh, the request that please process me so at that particular time that request will be considered as an interrupt because microprocessor interrupted towards their operation so that's why it is known as interrupt so 8085 microprocessor basically uses total five type of interrupts the first one is trap trap is generally known as non maskable interrupt non maskable interrupt means it is not controlled by the programmer if we have trap interrupt agar hamare paas trap interrupt aayi to ye trap interrupt agar aaya to usko turant usse acknowledgement dena hi padega aisa nahi ki microprocessor ke paas koi choice hai ki wo use hold kar de aur apne process ko implement kare so that's why it is known as non maskable interrupt the remaining three are rst 7.5 6.5 and 5.5 that is known as restart interrupt ye bhi iski bhi jo priority hoti hai wo uh, zyada hoti hai but uh, iski priority trap se kam hoti hai तो आर एस टी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव फाइव पॉइंट फाइव एंड सेवन पॉइंट फाइव दीज आर बेसिकली योर री स्टार्ट इंटरप्ट देन वी हैव अनदर टू दैट इज आई एन टी आर एंड आई एन टी ए कॉम्प्लीमेंट आई एन टी आर इज जनरली जनरल पर्पज इंटरप्ट दैट्स वाई इट इज आई एन टी आर मीन्स इंटरप्ट रिक्वेस्ट एंड आई एन टी ए कॉम्प्लीमेंट मीन्स इंटरप्ट एक्नोलेजमेंट एंड कॉम्प्लीमेंट मीन्स इट इज एक्टिव लो सिग्नल वेन द इनपुट इज जीरो देन इट इज हाई एंड वेन इट इज वन देन इट इज लो in the right hand side we have a serial input output channel this is basically used to provide the serial input information as well as serial output information okay so if the data must be taken serially so we generally use sie signal serial input data and if the data must be processed serially towards the outside world then we generally use sod that means serial output data